So let's get down to it. Moon Miner Mission, Part 6. Uh, tonight we are launching the revised version of the Miner Base to Minmus. But first, we have a bit of unfinished business from last Wednesday. So let's go into the tracking station. Uh, since last Wednesday, I did complete the uh, parts retrieval mission. That went relatively uneventfully. And uh, you might remember the trainees and rescue mission, the main purpose of which was to get a new seven-person landing vehicle on the moon station. Well, it's in moon orbit now. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, we don't need to have that around anymore. Back to tracking station, and we'll remote explode. And now I will cut you into little pieces. Just like this. Terminate! There we go. The reason I didn't do this off camera is that this one is actually complicated enough to be worth watching. We have the return ship here, the smaller one, and the lander here with a huge tank with a good bit of fuel still in it. I need to dock both of these to the moon space station. And the maneuvers we're going to have to go through to make that happen are going to make entertaining entertaining Twitch. It's content, ladies and gentlemen, so let's get on with it. Now is the winter of our Twitch content. Alright, we've matched speeds with the space station at uh, three, 312 meters. Now, let me double check and make sure that there is at least one person in the return ship who can fly it. Yep, we got the pilots here. So Jebediah is the only person in the landing ship at the moment? Yes, good. Okay, we're going to undock the landing ship. And we're going to dock it with the space station first. Almost on target. Incidentally, I have now seen the SpaceX docking app. It looks entertaining. I want to give it a try on the stream one of these days once I can figure out the best way of doing that. All right, and we're on final approach for docking. And if Kerbal Space Program had a docking app as delicate and precise as the SpaceX app, this would be a lot easier to do. <laughs> yeah, Random Fast Reader, I understand. When I go to conventions, I have in between 5 and as much as 17 hours of driving per day to do. So I have a lot of audiobooks. RCS off. Are we close enough? SAS off. There we go. And now, here's the big fat bastard. The fat bastard that's hauling all the fuel up. We have to dock this, transfer the fuel, undock it, dump the stage so it crashes into the moon, and then redock. And we're getting farther and farther away, drifting away from the space station. And meanwhile, you get to watch Kerbin rise. There's Kerbin rising in the background as we speak.
Thanks, Random Fast Reader. I appreciate it. Cute, thirsty mule, stinky cheese. I mean, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what an equestrian would name their kid if they really hated them. <laughs> well, Random Fast Reader, you don't ask these questions, but somebody really does have to. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cute Thirsty Mule Stinky Cheese. <laughs> Of course, I can't I can't make too much of a deal about that after all. I wrote a restaurant into a story not too long ago with the uh, with the fake name Chez Fromage Malodoron. <laughs> I've had so many people say you need a big truck for your business, Chris. And one of the reasons why I haven't got one nor have I got a uh, trailer to tow behind the van is parking the bastard. I've driven trailers on a couple of rare occasions. It's not fun. I've never driven a, a commercial vehicle before or anything that long, and don't really want to, at least not anytime soon, because big vehicles are a pain in the ass to maneuver, especially in tight places, and double plus especially when you have to put it in a very precise place like a parking space. Okay. I think I have a couple of options here. Control from here, that's the easiest way. Well, we are really cracking. There we go. Yeah, when I edit this, this is going to have the Kraken baiting thing flashing on it, no question. All right. Big Bastard is approaching target at half a meter per second. On target, six meters, five meters, RCS off. SAS off. And we have a dock. And we're going to cheat a time warp a bit to get the Kraken chased away. All right. I've left just a little bit of fuel in this bottom stage so that we can drop it onto the moon and then get back. These fuel tanks down here are all but empty. So it's time to take the bus and shorten it significantly. Okay. Keeping that targeted because we're going to burn just enough to get a uh, get a death run on the surface, dump the stage, and then burn right back up. All right. We're, we're, leaving, uh, we're leaving 70 units of liquid fuel to crash on the surface, but that's fine by me. Clear. There we go. And 
Stay steady, why don't you? There. Alright. And this is us returning to the station. And our discarded stage is well on its way to going boom on the surface of the moon. And there's Jeb being quietly smug. He's done some work today and he's quite pleased with himself, but he doesn't want to brag. Yet. He's going to save his bragging for when he goes on the Duna mission, which he knows is going to happen at some point. With the SpaceX system, it tells you exactly what your orientation and alignment are with the docking port. I am totally eyeballing this, because the uh, docking mode that they gave you beginning in, I think, 1.4 or 1.5, I find it to be damn near useless. Nice and steady. We're not setting, setting any speed records, but speed is not necessarily a uh, house. It's not a virtue when you're dealing with docking ships. Okay. Yeah, we're still definitely off center by a pretty decent way. But it could have been a lot worse. Okay, five meters to go. RCS off. Contact, SAS, damn, instant. It must have been lined up better than I thought it was. And I'm going to dump this as well, even with the batteries, now that we know we can get the science out of here without necessarily having all this electrical storage up here. Reason being, I want to try to de-cracken this station a bit. There we go. So this is now completely empty, and we're going to dump the bastard. It has a probe core, but it doesn't have an antenna, so when we disconnect this thing, it becomes uncontrollable, unless we have this ship tied to it. However, this ship has a lot more Delta V than is necessary for it to get home. So there we are. RCS, backing away, SAS on, reaction wheels to full power, put the ship on retrograde attitude, because we're going to do with this the same thing that we did with that booster stage, we're going to drop it into the moon. Goodbye, space station. We won't be seeing you again tonight. All right, undock. SES on. Get on prograde and get back our orbit. And actually, we are actually on a point to burn now to leave. I mean, right this minute now. So I guess instead of staying in a lower orbit, we're getting the hell out of here. 
Okay, dropping that periapsis around Kerbin. Okay, come on, under a hundred. There we go. Just as simple as that, we have a re-entry trajectory on Kerbin. Okay, crossed over into Kerbin's sphere of influence out of the moons. And here we go yet again, flying into a universal picture. <laughs> no, we're going to do some creative burning now and try to move that periapsis around where it gets us closer to the space station coming, the, the space center coming down, and away from that damn desert or worse. I've done this before by accident. Why can't I do it on purpose? Okay. Periapsis at uh, not quite 37 kilometers. Get on retrograde. Haul in the solar panels. Okay. Periapsis right above this sea now, and that is a little bit dangerous because we shoot over this point. We're coming down right on the Bad Day Mountains. And we're already slowing down. Periapsis is dropping. Heat warning on the passenger compartment. Rolling is not making it go away. Okay, and the trajectory is shorting up, shortening up really quick. Okay, we are falling short of the space center. Are we falling short of the mountains? Looks like we will, yes. Yeah, we're going for a splashdown. Good. I was worried for a moment there. Jebediah, though, cool as a cucumber, and Phil and Orming are doing their best to imitate him. Bad day mountains. We're not coming anywhere close to them, thankfully. And I'm going to go ahead and pop the chutes now. Looking good. Looking very good. Okay, here comes the jolt. Didn't quite peg the meter. 14 G's when the when the parachutes opened up. Might be minimus, might be something else. Don't know, don't care. We've been there. And we're glad to be back home at least for a little bit before we, our turn comes up in the roster again. Jebediah, Phil, Orming, Jesden, Henmull, Magner, and the rescued Robald Kerman. All coming home. All right, recover vessel. I removed the landing pad and replaced the broad-based fuel tank with a narrower one here, which has the extra side effect of straightening up the solar panels and heat radiators. Now we're firing in three, two, one, fire. All right, 
So far, so good. How about not so thrashy? Getting ready to dump the boosters. Nice clean separation. Excellent. Yeah, let's not do that. Whoa! And our apoapsis is already way in space. Wasn't expecting that. Faring away. Antenna is out. All right, and I need to start burning seriously now. Whoa! That's one hell of a shimmy. Steady up, damn it. Let's get that wheel, th wheel off so it's not fighting itself. All right. And we're already well past apoapsis. I did not remember having this much problem with flexing on this decoupler as I am now. Obviously, I'm forgetful. Okay, we're back in atmosphere already. This is me getting desperate. Nope, that's it. We're done. We are toast. I don't know how we're surviving. But we're ascending again, that's something at least. Burning seed corn, but we're ascending. Okay. Apoapsis is back up to 93. We're on our way back out of atmosphere. And we've used up most of the fuel that we needed to use to get out to Minmus. Get on prograde. and burn like hell because we need any orbit at this point. Oh, 
All right, circular orbit, 113 by 114. But we were going to need one hell of an inclination change to get coplanar with Minmus. Shit. Yeah, we're going to have to get into the landing bu landing stage budget just to make Minmus orbit. That's how I'm reading this right now. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Okay. Okay. I'm going to need one more burn to get circular. Right. One forty three by one forty six. Not quite high orbit, but certainly not low orbit. And the other two components are going to have to chase this up here. There's the fuel ducting I was talking about. And here are these things. And I need to check the staging on these as well. Yeah, on this one, they're correctly placed. And hopefully this one will be less eventful than the previous launch. Quick inspection. That will do. That will do nicely.
All right, we fill up the booster stage. Yay. We double check all the other tanks. Ooh, yes. Damn good thing we did, too. And there's still going to be a good bit of fuel left in this booster stage for the vampire to come by and suck out. But now all the tanks that are on the base are full up. So we drop that out of the way. And we're going to let it drift for now. Despite my best efforts, I did not wreck these two pieces of the, uh, of the Moon Miner. That's going to Minmus. And I was even able to refuel the ship. Excellent, right? So, we have one piece left, and then this mess goes off to Minmus. Let's go back to the Space Center. The main thing we learned from that launch is that the left and right pieces are imbalanced now. They probably weren't in very close balance to begin with, but now they are pretty badly imbalanced, which means it's very difficult to fly them with precision at least so long so long as the uh, booster stage is still docked. So we're going to make one adjustment this time. We're going to disable the cross feed on the docking port on the right hand stack, which we're bringing up now. Well, no, it's cancel that. For next time, we're going to disable that right now. Disable cross speed, yay. And save. Now open the right hand stack. Here we go. And disable that one. No, enable, okay. So this one I've already fixed that. Good. All right. Incidentally, we started out with the night with 1.1 million or close enough to it of funds over here. We're draining through that real quick as we get this stuff in orbit. This has to work. In three, two, one, fire. <laughs> What gets me is how many of my designs with fairings end up looking like bacteriophage viri. We're spreading space viruses. <laughs> the other planets don't like us because Earth has our cooties. Come on, get up equatorial, why don't you? on. That's better. Wow, we're, we're up in a hurry. What the? Staging. I forgot to check the staging on those damn struts. Well, this is going to be a bit of an adventurous launch still, isn't it? Oh, crap. I forgot to put crew in either one of these things. I'm going to have to waste a launch to get a crew up here. 
and let's see what we can do about getting an intercept. Apparently, we can wait till the 12th of Never. 1.1 kilometers relative speed, about 50 meters per second. All right. All right. One last check of the tanks. And then it is time to dump you. And on this one, I have to approach very slowly to make sure I've got the best alignment I can get with the left-hand side. I think that's about got it. Retract antenna. RCS off. Okay, we have a dock. And it's nearest, damn it, to being level. All right. This is still a little bit on the tall side, but it has a nice broad base. It should be good. But before we take it out to Minmus, because I was an idiot, we have to go back to the Space Center. And we have to bring up a crew. This is the ore station roller. And I will go ahead and add a couple of struts to... No. No. Well, a couple of more struts to this. I already had one on there. There. This holds nothing as it's built. This holds absolutely nothing. Okay. As it stands, it's got 2400 meters per second of Phantom Delta V in the Wolfhound stage here. Yeah, this barely gets to orbit without touching the uh, this thing here. I think I'm best off just launching a separate stack. It'll be simpler and safer. Uh, this ship only costs 10 grand, well, 11 grand, and will get three Kerbals to orbit. That's all I need. Except... I will add a probe core because I'm sending up three engineers and zero pilots. You know, if I was feeling particularly murderous, I might... I'm actually seriously considering this. Uh, let's go ahead and... Don't save that for now. I can just remake that in a moment. I have seen a uh, lightest ship to such and so get away with launching open control seats inside fairings. So for a thousand bucks and very little off our Delta V, if I don't mind potentially killing three level two engineers on the way up, if this doesn't work, we can do this. You'll notice nobody's volunteering. Well, we'll try it anyway. There we go. Ep 
This will only leave Bob on the ground. Two of the faces aren't even loading in. Not a good sign. All right. Oh. Well, one thing we're doing, we're, take, we're taking this right back to the VAB because I forgot about something. On this one, because of the nature of the thing, the probe core is on the back of the rover, which means it's turned on its side in relation to the booster. So I need to get in here and say control from the docking port that's on top of the stack. And it won't let me do it. Not here, anyway. Oh, getting this thing up is going to be a real adventure. All right, get it back out there. All right, three, two, say goodbye to three Kerbals, possibly. One, fire. Okay, that's an abort. We have problems. Turn, you bastard! Turn! All right, last chance to... Okay, we have problems. Big problems. I saved two of them. 
I saved two of them, but we lost pretty much everything else. Okay. That was an expensive learning experience. Screw a paraglider. I don't want I don't want all that lateral momentum, damn it. I just want you down. Cannot switch vessels while about to crash. Well, what the fuck were you doing a moment ago, switching back and forth? Christ. And I would much rather have had the circular uh, parachutes that just drop you down than these stupid paragliders. After all of that, I would like the two Kerbals that I rescued to actually live. Okay, so I did successfully get one Kerbal killed. But not because they couldn't survive the seat, but because I didn't have enough control authority on the ship. And what looked like... What looked like a uh, balanced cent center of mass was not. Jesden Kerman killed in action. Our second Kerbal fatality. And uh, this says it all right here. Nearly maximum stupidity. Which was, of course, why she signed on with us. All right. Which means we have no choice now. We have to send Bill up on the crew because we only have three engineers left after rescuing Mill Doc and uh, Elbury. Center of mass looks centered. But what was doing it, I'm almost certain. Yes, because the reaction wheel is here and it's facing south. So whenever it's trying to do anything, it's pulling in the wrong direction. So wheel authority to naught. Get me two reaction wheels in the right place and a new probe core there we go we lost a hundred and ten thousand on that last orbit plus a Kerbal and this is going to cost a hundred twenty five thousand but this is indispensable to getting these contracts to work This time, no backflips. Save. And launch. Three, two, one, fire. All right, so far so good. There is definitely an imbalance, but it's slight. Slight, but persistent. On the way. Ooh, you're underpowered. There's something clipping that I didn't notice before. That could be a problem. What's a bigger problem is that 
The Wolfhound has not got nearly enough grunt to get us airborne. We are losing aerial speed and trajectory. Okay, we're just now getting back into positive thrust. Thrust weight ratio 0 0.29. No, we're not in the positive thrust. We're falling. Okay, I badly misjudged. Very badly. And it's going to cost another 125 grand. We're falling, and as we're falling, that wolfhound is going to lose efficiency. This is not looking good for this ship. The thing is, if, the, if it had flown as designed the first time, I wouldn't have been able to save two Kerbals. I would have lost all three. And aerodynamics just took over, and that's game over for this ship. Well, let's watch the explosion. <laughs> Nothing survived. Okay. One more failure like this and we lose all profit out of this out of this project. These gotta go. They're too, they're too puny. They run out too quick. We need more beef off the pad. That gets me enough to get into upper atmosphere and a bit more of a lateral velocity. This is still problematic, but at least ha it has a chance. Can it fly now? How about now? 0.35, 0 0.5. Okay, with these, it's in with a chance. Fins, thank you, Itsune, that's very correct, fins. Fins are important. And we've now gone from 125,000 to 173,000 for this ship. The good news is this is absolutely overkill. This is absolutely overkill, isn't it? This is ridiculous amounts of overkill, and we're not doing it that way. There is overkill when you're on a budget, Itsune, and we are running out of money fast. Swap these out for the cheaper uh, skippers. Because off the pad, that with the boosters, it would be 1.83. That's actually a bit too much anyway.
1.4, that's better. Please let it be better. This will get us into the upper atmosphere before we go on the wolfhound and these four thuds. After that, cross your fingers. Save one more time, and here we go. Third attempt. And we're flying in three, two, one, fire. cost us nearly 400,000 ker bucks, but we finally got this bastard up. Hundred by 110, and I'm not gonna fuck with it any further than that. All right, this is in orbit and ready to go to Minmus when we feel like it. Back to the Space Center. And now it's time to put together the crew I forgot to put on the mining station and get them up before we send it on its way. In memoriam, Joe What's-Her-Name. Save that. And remember, your generous donations go to the memory of those Kerbals that we have lost in the name of space exploration and bad design choices. And Mildoc, Mildoc is a lot more cheerful than she ought to be after her recent traumatic experiences. But not to worry, our space program has counselors on hand for exactly that sort of thing. No, no, it's Sune. If you want the good drugs, you gotta, you gotta go to Bob for those. Bob's the connection. <laughs> Retsamayar, you find him at Kerbal Space Center when he's not on a mission. Okay, matching velocity right the hell now. And by some freak of circumstance and Kerbal Space Program not telling me shit, we're within a kilometer of target. All right then. Okay, and just to make sure, this still has 700 meters per second of delta V. We might use this for, our, I might use this off screen for a rescue contract later. But right now, Bill is going to EVA, get out the ship. And jet on over there. The station is 75% crewed, and I'm not going to send a fourth Kerbal up here even if I had another engineer on board. Right. 
let's get this thing and the rover both on their way to Minmus. That's the moon. There we go. We are more or less coplanar. So this should get us there just fine. We're not docking with anything, so all I'm doing with this is getting a low periapsis to make it easier to get captured in orbit. And then we can get to our target zone. That looks very wrong. That looks extraordinarily wrong. Thank you. I must have still had it controlling from a dock somewhere. Or possibly uh, one of the... Uh, one of the pods control points. All right. And we're burning now. What I just did was drain a bunch of fuel from the top of the tank here so that we make this burn entirely on the Wolf Pound engine here. And so I don't have to worry about balance issues with the landing stages until we actually go to land. With that, we, that can't be helped. But for now, we use the, uh, we use the engine with the grunt, or what little grunt this ship has. What am I doing? I'm an idiot. Dump the engine, you lose weight, you have greater delta V. I just did the exact opposite of what I should have been doing. All right, so forget safety, we'll go for fuel efficiency. Prepare to lose this stage and all that extra weight. the hell ah all right come on steady up Okay. 
almost there. And that's good enough. All right. That one is on its way. Three, two, one, fire. Inclination burn complete. This bugger has given me all the trouble tonight. And I still have no idea how it's going to work on the surface of Minmus. That's the hell of it. And the biggest question mark is, will this thing be able to get to orbit once these ore tanks are full? And the only way I have to test that is to use it. A little bit more time warp. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Uh oh. We had a moon encounter there for a moment. I hope that doesn't cause us trouble on the way out. Shouldn't, but... There we go. Okay, the, the miner station and... and the roller that picks everything up and brings it off the surface, they're on their way to Minimus. Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, where we'll pick up on this and hopefully get a successful mining station on the surface of some place. <sighs> and I have had a thought while I'm doing this. All the money that I've been wasting, all the money that I've been wasting on the Moon Miner project, I was not looking forward to putting another five hundred fifty to six hundred thousand dollars, putting another moon miner in orbit and make and making the second moon attempt but the thing is minmus has very light gravity so once we clear the minmus contract we're nearly done with minmus anyway we've got all the science we can out of it we can fuel up the moon miner with the refinery it's got on it lift it off the surface and fly it to the moon we might have to refuel the thing in moon orbit but we can recycle the station, land it on the moon with the crew on board, and still get that contract without wasting the money on any more launches. Okay, our EVE flyby mission has its maneuver node in 43 days. Uh, Space Telescope has its contract orbital insertion in 78 days. Asteroid Retrieval Mission has its encounter with Kerbin and an orbital insertion burn in 51 game days. So all things considered, by the time we are finally done faffing around with Moon and Minmus miners, we'll be ready to go interplanetary. And we, have, we currently have three contracts that if you put them all together, add up to a Duna. to a Duna orbital manned mission. So, it'll be a while before Duna's in the right position to launch that, but we are going to send Kerbals to Duna sometime in the near future. This has been Chris Overstreet, the Redneck Gaijin. We started out tonight with 1.1 million Kerbucks. We're down to just under 250,000. We need this to succeed 
or else we are in a very bad position. Thanks for your support, everybody. Here's the cog. Good night.